Welcome to the Marineth Artificial Rock Pool results video. My name is Jess Bone and I'm a research assistant for the Marineth project. This video is going to give you an overview of the main results from the two primary experiments for the artificial rock pools and the conclusions made. As part of the Marineth project, we had to meet certain targets set out by the EU Marine Strategy Framework Directive. Species richness and biomass had to be increased by 15% compared to the concrete seawall, and non-native species had to be reduced by 15%. Through the data we gathered during our monitoring, we were able to calculate whether or not we had met these targets. Experiment 1 was located on the south coast of the UK at Boldner on the Isle of Wight and at Sandbanks in Pool Harbour. There were two stretches of 80 metre seawall, one referred to as the control wall and the other referred to as the experimental wall, separated by 100 metres of unmonitored seawall and a slipway. On the experimental wall were 45 artificial rock pools with five single rock pools, five groups of three rock pools and five groups of five rock pools. There are 10 control sections to compare to the rock pools. The true controls are undisturbed seawall and the procedural controls were scraped bare to track the recolonisation of the seawall compared to the colonisation of the new artificial rock pools. For more information on monitoring, please watch the monitoring video. The data were analysed at two different spatial scales. The wall section scale, which will be focused on in this video, included the wall above and below the rock pools. The tidal zone scale only included the rock pools and sea wall at the same height as the rock pools. Monitoring was ongoing for two years and after two years we recorded 65 species on and in the artificial rock pools at the Sandbank site in Pool Harbour. This included 25 seaweeds, 10 arthropod species which included crabs, prawns, barnacles and sea slaters, 12 mollusk species, 2 fish species and 7 sea squirts. Compared to the 65 species on the rock pools, only 40 species were recorded on the surrounding seawall, including fewer species in all taxonomic groups. Using the data from our final two-year survey, there is an average of almost 100% increase in species richness compared to the procedural controls. This means at Sandbanks we achieved the 15% Marine Strategy Framework Directive's descriptor target. Our key findings included the type of species in the rock pools. There were more squishy, soft-bodied species, such as sea squirts and sponges, which were not found on the seawall as it dries out too quickly during low tide. However, in the rock pools, they were kept wet and sheltered. Delicate species were also more common in the rock pools, such as fine seaweeds and delicate bryozoans. Fish and prawns were also found in the rock pools and crabs were more abundant in the rock pools than on the exposed sea wall. The most exciting species found at Sandbanks was the native oyster, which has declined by 95% in UK waters and is a protected species. The slow growing calcareous oyster is an efficient filter feeder, removing pollutants and suspended material in the water. In the top left image you can see the Montague's Blenny, a small benthic fish which was a first record for the entire harbour. In the top right and bottom right photos is a snake lox anemone and a sea squirt, both soft bodied species that thrived in the rock pools. In the bottom left is the white shell of a native oyster cemented to the inside of one of the rock pools. After two years, 13% of the species on the rock pools were non-native which equated to eight species compared to 15% of species on the seawall. The rock pools did not increase the number of non-native species on the seawall, but this was expected, as new structures are rapidly colonised by opportunistic species like non-natives. All non-native species that colonised the artificial rock pools were found elsewhere in the harbour, which is a non-native hotspot, so the rock pools did not introduce any new non-native species. Biomass is the weight of living material and often requires removing living material from the environment in order to determine how much biomass there is. In order to avoid destructively sampling everything living on the rock pools, biomass of key functional groups was sampled and abundance data were used to extrapolate estimates of biomass growing on the artificial rock pools and seawall. The artificial rock pools increased biomass by an average of 85%, predominantly through the growth of brown algae and filter feeders, achieving the target. 
This is neatly demonstrated in the image on the right, where brown algae is growing on the rock pools, but very little is found on the surrounding sea wall. Increasing biomass can help to reduce atmospheric carbon and nutrients in the water by storing it in living tissue and passing it up the food chain. So if we break the results down further into the different treatments of the experiment, looking at the true control, which was undisturbed seawall, the procedural control, which had an area scraped clear, a section of seawall with one rock pool, a section of seawall with three rock pools, and a section of seawall with five rock pools. Each treatment was replicated five times, and this graph shows the total number of species and mean number of species that can be found in each treatment, shown along the bottom in the photos. The red box in each photo also shows the area that was surveyed and the species richness data that were used in this graph. The control sections of seawall had relatively low species richness, with the true control having the highest total of species with 18. However, all rock pool treatments easily exceed the control treatments with just one rock pool adding about 15 species to the seawall. The total number of species added increases linearly with the number of rock pools. There is little difference in the mean number of species between the three and five rock pool treatments. This graph shows how much impact the rock pools have on species richness of the seawall, particularly as groups. This is a multi-dimensional scaling graph which shows us how the community of each quadrat and rock pool compare with each other from the two-year survey data. Each icon represents a plot of data which includes the number of species and the abundance of each species present within a quadrat or rock pool. The blue triangles represent the quadrats taken above the rock pools as shown in the photo. The red squares represent the quadrats taken on the sea wall at the same tidal height as the rock pools and the green diamonds are the quadrats taken below the rock pools. The light grey triangles represent the communities recorded on the outside of the rock pools and the dark grey triangles represent the communities recorded in the inside of the rock pool basin. The proximity of each triangle to each other indicates how similar they are and so we can see the main finding from this graph is that the cluster of rock pool interior data points are further away from all the other data points. This shows how much of a different community of marine life can be found inside the rock pools compared to the outside of the rock pools and the rest of the sea wall. Having different communities and patches of habitat like this can help to increase the resilience of marine life to disturbance. Just like our sandbank site, monitoring was ongoing for two years and after two years we recorded 44 species on and in the artificial rock pools at the Boldner site on the Isle of Wight. This included 26 seaweeds, 7 arthropod species, which includes crabs, prawns, barnacles and sea slaters, 5 mollusk species, 1 fish species and 1 sponge. Compared to the 44 species on the rock pools, there were 40 species on the surrounding seawall. Using the data from our final two-year survey, there is an average of almost 100% increase in species richness compared to the procedural controls. This means at Bolna we also achieved the 15% Marine Strategy Framework Directive Descriptor target. Just like sandbanks, we found species in the rock pools that would not have survived on the sea wall, but we found fewer of these species at Bolna than we did at sandbanks. This may be because Boldner is a more exposed site on the open sea, whereas the Sandbank site is in a more sheltered harbour where larvae of marine life are more likely to accumulate and settle on the rock pools. In the top image you can see a delicate green seaweed in one of the rock pools called Henpen or Bryopsis plumosa, and in the bottom image is a shanny fish called Lipophrys follis. After two years, 2% 2 of the species on the rock pools were non-native, which equated to one species, compared to 5% of species on the seawall. As with sandbanks, it was not unexpected that we did not meet the Marine Strategy Framework Directive Descriptor target for non-native species. The non-native species that had colonised the rock pools at Boldner was the barnacle Ostraminius modestus, pictured on the right, which was also found in low abundances on the surrounding seawall. The artificial rock pools at Boldner increased biomass by an average of 27%, achieving the target 15%. This is quite a lot less than the sandbank site, and this is because the seawall at Boldner is much better colonised with large specimens of brown seaweeds, including a number of fucoid species and Ascophyllum nodosum. 
as the rock pools have only had two years of fucoid growth compared to the decades of growth the seawall has had, this increase of biomass at that tidal level is quite an achievement. Additionally, some of the Ascophyllum nodosum rack canopy on the seawall was removed at the time of rock pool installation in the procedural control areas to allow for recolonisation comparison, so biomass of these seawall areas would have been lower as a result. So if we break the results down again further into the different treatments of the experiment, the control sections of the seawall had relatively low species richness, with the true control having the highest total of species with 16, though there is very little difference in species richness among the control seawall sections. However, all rock pool treatments exceed the control treatments with just one rock pool adding about 12 species to the seawall. The total number of species added increases linearly with the number of rock pools, though the gradient of this increase at Boldner isn't as steep as it is at Sandbanks. There is little difference in the total number of species between all rock pool treatments and unlikely to be a statistically significant difference between 1 and 3 rock pools and 3 and 5 rock pools. This graph emphasises again how much impact the artificial rock pools have on adding species to a seawall, though there are differences in the magnitude of this impact depending on the site. This is another multidimensional scaling graph which shows us how the community of each quadrat and rock pool compare with each other from the two year survey data. The points represent the same rows and rock pools as the sandbank site, except we have extra data for another bottom row at Boldner as there was more seawall that could be monitored. This is indicated by the purple data points on the graph and the purple squares on the photo. The proximity of each data point to each other indicates how similar they are, and so we can see the main finding from this graph is that the cluster of rock pool interior and exterior data points are clustered away from the seawall data points. This again demonstrates how much of a different community of marine life can be found inside and on the outside of the rock pools compared to the rest of the seawall, even though both the rock pools and the seawall had a similar number of species. So to conclude our experiment one of rock pool groupings compared to the surrounding seawall at Boldner and Sandbanks, we achieved the Marine Strategy Framework Directive targets of increasing species richness and biomass by at least 15%, but we did not meet the non-native species target. Our general findings from the rock pool grouping suggest that groups of rock pools are better than single rock pools on their own, but even one rock pool is enough to increase biomass, species richness, and introduce a new community to a seawall. Moving on from experiment 1 to experiment 2, which was located on the south coast of the UK at Hamble Harbour in Hampshire and on the north coast of France at Eastraham in Normandy. 24 rock pools were deployed at each site and instead of arranged in horizontal rows, were arranged in eight columns of three rock pools on vertical seawalls. Unlike experiment 1, the surrounding seawall was not monitored. As with the Experiment 1 sites, monitoring was ongoing for two years and after two years we recorded 34 species on and in the artificial rock pools at the Hamble Harbour site in the UK. This included 11 seaweeds, 3 worm species, 9 arthropod species, 7 mollusks, 1 fish, 2 sponges and 1 hydroid. Though the surrounding seawall was not formally monitored, it was evident this number of species was not present on the seawall. 6% of the species found on the rock pools were non-native, which equated to two species, but both have been recorded elsewhere in the harbour. This bar chart breaks down the results of the mean species richness looking at the top, middle and bottom rock pools at Hamble Harbour and shows these figures across two years of surveys. In the first 12 months, the species richness increases over time and then plateaus for the next year. The top rock pools, indicated by the solid black bars, decreases after 18 months, which is likely to be related to the seasons, with species richness dipping after a hot summer. The top rock pools will be exposed to adverse conditions for the longest between the tides, and so it is expected that the species richness in the top rock pools will not be as great as the middle and bottom rock pools, which will also be shaded from sun by the rock pools above. Shortly after installing the rock pools at Hamble Harbour, the middle and bottom rock pools began to retain a small amount of fine mud, which had accumulated to 5 cm deep after two years. The mud was sampled exhaustively at the two-year survey interval and was sieved for macrofauna. 
The main conclusions from Experiment 2 at Hamble Harbour are that vertical arrays of rock pools reflect a tidal gradient, but even uppermost rock pools still add species to the sea wall that are otherwise absent, such as blue mussels. We also found that lower rock pools may be prone to retaining sediment, but this provides a habitat in its own right for informal species like worms and bivalves. Thanks for watching. There are more videos in the rock pool series which are listed on screen. Be sure to also visit our social media and the Marinef Project website for more resources.